Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity to speak in front of a such a distinguished audience. The several current international challenges, such as uh, protectionism, migration flows, climate change, the persistent international crisis, urge us to focus on the complex dynamics in the relations among global players. The European public opinion has considered for years the European project as a tool to tackle these challenges as well as a shield against their negative impact. But now it is questioning its validity and credibility. Without disregarding its historical merits, Europeans want it to be fitter for the current and the future challenges. Today, I have the opportunity to illustrate how, how we in Italy are giving effect to this demand for change. Although I will focus mainly on the economic and the social aspect of domestic affairs. I'm sure it will be of some interest to you, for you, as uh, our experience might be an indication on what Europe is going to look like tomorrow. There is a key word around which we have been uh, constructing our political vision and also our daily activity. Such a word is uh, people. Italian people have been very patient and disciplined for many years. They have trusted Italian and European political and technical institutions. For years, they have embraced the economic, the key economic beliefs preached by the so-called liberal democratic order, integration into the global market, free movement of uh, people and capital, fiscal frugality, unchecked adoption of new technologies, untamed global finance. They have believed the euro to be able uh, to solve all the chronic problems high inflation, weak currency, public debt. They enthusiastically adopted the new currency. Reality turned out to be very different instead. The price for a stable currency and the low inflation has been a growing public debt despite a continuous belt tightening in order to keep primary expenditure constantly below tax revenues. Fiscal frugality hold back GDP growth. GDP in the third quarter of 2018 is still five percentage points below the peak in the first quarter of 2008. Open global markets, free movement of capital, as well as uh, the technological revolution did generate a large payoff as promised. But just for the few, not for the many. Thus, enthusiasm, enthusiasm about the future has given way to a gloomier view. A sense of despair has been spreading. Even the middle class use it to feel itself free from basic economic needs, now fears poverty. Everyone, with a few exceptions, tends to perceive that tomorrow will be worse than today. Those who can do encourage their kids to live and to look for better opportunities elsewhere. History teach us that uh, anything can happen when people feel deceived. 
unfairly treated. Despite this danger, my fellow Italian citizens have proved to be very mature and deeply attached to their democratic institutions. They have not taken the streets or acted violently to express their discontent and their rage. Their rage, sorry. Rather, they have used democratic election to dismiss the old elites and to support those who we were suggesting alternative ways to resume the path toward prosperity. My government is the institutional answer to the desire of the Italian people of finding a new way forward. My duty and my priority as a prime minister is to preserve this precious endowment of trust by giving an immediate relief to the most urgent needs of my people. Only by keeping on addressing the needs of my citizens will I be able to count on their trust to face the long-run problems that have been holding us back for so long. I regard this as a key political issue. For too many years, Italian and European politicians have got this sequence wrong, giving priority to the use of trust rather than to its preservation. In the past, they have asked people to make sacrifice in the name of a sparkling future. They have dismantled labor market regulation in the name of more or and better jobs. They have allowed a retreat of the state as a direct producer of goods and services, allegedly in the exchange for better quality of services, lower prices, and higher customer satisfaction. Fearing state failure, they have asked people to tolerate market failures. Care of long-run interest has been displaced by addiction to short-termism. People have already paid the brunt of these changes, while the benefits are yet to come. Citizens are now aware that all these changes they have been enduring have resulted in a much worse society in terms of opportunities, income distribution, social justice, welfare conditions, job security, growth perspective from them and their children. We need to provide an answer to all this. I will not be easy, and it, it, it will not be easy, and it, it will be not happen tomorrow. However, while we design and implement solutions, we also need to bring relief. The two main measures contained in our budget law, citizen income, and the flexible retirement age are our immediate answers to our country's most urgent needs. Citizen income provides support for 1.7 million poor families, 5 million people. This in exchange for the availability to work or to acquire the skill needed. Firms have the incentive to offer a job to people enrolled in the program because they will enjoy a cut in the social security contributions. While the program is oriented to poor people, it provides at the same time an implicit insurance for working class families vulnerable to unexpected shocks due to their fragile financial situation. Few misconceptions need to be clarified 
about the new rules applying to retirement age. This measure represents a remedial solution for many people who have sadly been told that their retirement age was postponed for many, by many years. We believe this is a, seri a serious violation of the social contract, which needs to be amended. I also wish to reassure about the long-run sustainability of our pension system. It will remain fully sustainable because those who choose to retire earlier will uh, end up getting a lower amount and also because the reform only applies for three years. Let me also remind you that uh, those choosing to retire earlier leave posts available for the youth. In the public sector, this could enable both a much needed regeneration of the staff and a significant productivity increase. We have been uh, able to find a way to start this program despite the tight conditions of our pub public finances. We were very proud of this. These are highly important interventions urgently required to heal our severe social wounds. However, they can hardly provide the solution to the deep-rooted problems of our society, which is uh, perceived as unequal in the opportunity it offers, unjust in the distribution of what it produces, unable to generate generate enough for everybody. To tackle these issues, we need much more robust fixes in the rules governing our economy and society. We need to set the rules of the game capable of supporting ordinary people while preserving the environment, capable of generating a fair income distribution, better opportunity for everybody, decent, decent, safe and stable working conditions for all and not just for lucky minorities. In one word, we need rules put in center stage human beings, families, communities. We need to stop confusing the means with the ends as we have done so for so many years. We need a new humanesimo. This vision is radically new. It is uh, new because uh, we are not thinking in terms of a big, small government as the traditional left-right divide has done for uh, more than a century. Rather, we believe that the true divide lies between those who have and those who don't have the power to shape the destiny of their nation. We believe that uh, this power can, cannot be bestowed on a tiny minority of citizens. We are radical, but we are radical because we want to bring this power back where it uh, was meant to be in the first place by our Constitution, to the people express it in the forms and modes set by the law. In Italy, in Italy, la sovranità appartiene al popolo. Sovereignty belongs to the people. And the forms of exercising that are established by law. This is the vast and uh, multi-phase program which is guided by a simple concept. Support merit while fighting monopoly and the rent-seeking behavior and uh, endless sequence of reforms can spur from the pursuit of this basic idea. 
supporting merit, merit will bring our attention to education, and especially early childhood education, which many social scientists regard now as the stage in life when the destiny of a person is shaped. Quality of early education for all, while relatively not expensive, is one of the most powerful tools to level the playing field and one of the highest return investment available for a society. Fighting rent seeking and monopolistic behavior implies a radical revision of rules to access markets to enter professions. More generally, a revision of all the red tape and the bureaucratic norms not serve other goals but protecting the insiders. Fighting rent-seeking behaviors means to be tough on corruption for it being the most shameful power, power abuse aimed at uh, extracting a rent from those who are just asking to exercise a legitimate right. My government is not hesitating on this front. We have adopted an uh, anti-corruption law that now is among the toughest in the world. We have started to overheat the economic regulation in virtually any subject, from bankruptcy to procurement to civil judicial regulation. Our ambition is to show that there are no trade-offs between a more equal, inclusive, and I would say gentle society and a vibrant economy generating enough for everybody in a sustainable way. When fairness is widely felt and trust prevails over second-guessing behaviors, people tend to be more willing to look with hope to the future, to renounce to something today for something better tomorrow. When efforts and sacrifices are rewarded rather than being seized by rent seeker and their predator behavior, it is rational for people to invest more in human and physical capital because it is going to produce higher returns. When a sense of inclu inclusiveness doesn't cement communities, it is rational for people to invest in public capital and to trust more institutions because the fruit of this investment will be shared equally rather than accruing only to the better offs. Finally, a more equally just society is stronger because people trust each other and it is more efficient because uh, fewer res resources are waste defending and just privileges. Italy is now walking along this path. We want to go very far. How long it will take, I cannot say. What I do know for sure is that our strive for a better society would be easier if we were not alone in this quest. Any community, if left alone, will have a hard time in facing the headwinds of those who play one nation against the other to their own advantage. If we we as uh, Europeans were more united in this endeavor, we would be much stronger in upholding the view, inspiring the original dream of a Europe that protects its people and the value dear to us. Freedom, social justice, 
fair treatment for everyone, solidarity among people and nations, rule of law. This is the Europe we Italians dream of, a Europe of the people, by the people, for the people. Thank you for your attention.